Mike, Chris, are you guys ready to start the season finale? Oh, yeah. hell yeah! Yeah, baby! Woo! Good. Oh, God. Oh, what the... Oh, oh, it's in my mouth. Oh, oh, God. What the... Jay, why would you fucking pour buckets of blood on us? I just dumped a barrel of blood on you because we watched I Had a Bloody Good Time at House Harker, and we're about to have a bloody good time on B Movie Media! Welcome to the crossroads of camp, the bastion of the bazaar, the place where low budgets meet high praise. Yes, it's B Movie Mania! And now, B-Movie Maniacs, here are your hosts, the cream of the crap, the connoisseurs of cult, your cinematic creepy uncles, Mike Hayes, Jason Hulls, and Crazy Chris Hudson. Guys, I'm so sorry I had to dump a barrel of blood on you guys. I just thought it would make for a better episode. Um, it's the season finale, season three of B-Movie Mania. I'm Jason Halls. Right here covered in blood is Crazy Chris Hudson. Why didn't you warn us? I mean, you got a tarp to keep all the blood off yourself. Well, you know, we I mean, I, I thought it would ruin the surprise if I told you. Oh, God. We also have Bloody Mike Hayes. Um, hang on. Um, what is happening? Um, 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 Sorry, Jay. I, I really appreciate the fact that you put a bunch of ketchup on my hot dog because it's it's National Hot Dog Day. You recorded this thing, so um, oh, this is really good, like my, bloody hot dog. That's that's what? not ketchup. No, I, I've I've just been saying it's blood. It's it's blood, Mike. Mm. Mike, it's blood. Mm. But I'm gonna hot. I got a hot dog I'm eating right now. And the reason it has to be blood is because we watched. I had a bloody good time at House Harker. And I am going to just give you the very brief IMDb synopsis. It's been generations since the Harker's great-great-grandfather killed Count Dracula. Now the Harker brothers and their best friend Ned are a town joke. Until a real vampire shows up. So, um, guys, uh, I know you probably did uh, some research on this one. Um, it's, it's a low budget movie, right? Wouldn't you say? Yeah. I think they raised 37,000 on Kickstarter or something. Yeah. Yeah, That, um, that was for post only actually. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely like an indie flick. Like if nothing else, it looks really good. If I, if I say right now, I know we're not getting into whatever, but it looks really well done. So Yes, I agree. I think it's it disguises the film. fact that it's low budget. It does. No, they, they yeah. just have talented people working on it, and they did a very good job of hiding the fact how low the budget was. Well, mm-hmm. well, one thing that really helped them hide the, the budget, I don't want to get too into this just yet, but the beginning of the movie is like really great lighting, great effects, and it's kind of interspersed with a really cheap stage production. So it really helps spread the budget when you cut back and forth between the two. True. Yes, we got to go into that beginning because that that was it was unique and it was strong. It really set the tone. Just to put it out there, um, you know, right up front, um, we noticed a while back that the uh, official Instagram account for this movie started following us. And so we used that as an opportunity to start up a little dialogue. And so um, I actually have a few different kind of behind the scenes facts that I was able to get from the filmmakers that hopefully we can talk about. Um, one interesting one, um, right off the bat is, you know, we were talking about kind of where this was shot and, and, uh, it was shot in superior Wisconsin, which is hometown to one of the characters named Ned. And they actually took 21 people from California to (laughs) superior Wisconsin to film. What? Yeah. Yeah. I, wow. if hopefully we're going to wow. get an interview with these guys. And that's one thing I got to ask him is the logistics <laughs> behind that. How does that fucking fit in the budget? I, well, that's, I mean, well, they probably just drove cause you know, it's just a nice, <laughs> just nice, easy cars. Commute. Just the caravan. 
Yeah. But evidently they shot 60% of the movie there and they shot 40 in back in California. Huh? Yeah. Pretty wild. Quick takes. Quick takes. <laughs> are we, are we going into it too much? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What do you think? You're in charge. All right. Mike, give me a quick take. Oh, have mercy on these dry bones. <laughs> <laughs> because I uh, feel like I'm at home with this movie. You know who that song is sung by? Is it right, Seth Fred? Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. I don't. I don't. I. I okay, want to know how they got. Fucking night. I've been looking for the version of that song, and I can't find it because they have a song called "Lord Take Mercy." Lord have mercy on my tidal bones. We'll post it. That's one of the things we'll post on our on the site. The actual version of the song because it's. Glorious. I just want to know how and why they got Right Said Fred for the soundtrack because it's been like 25 years or so since they were. I mean, I'm not saying they're not relevant, but they're since not. they were in, they're since not. They were, <laughs> since they were like big in pop culture, like, wow, I mean, I, I respect it. I, lo- I like the two songs that you yeah, they got. It's from funny. Them. So uh, I just wonder what the story is behind that. Yeah. Maybe we'll ask. Well, let there. me tell you. They asked. <laughs> they asked. And they oh, 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 shit. Sometimes <laughs> yeah. it's just that. And they even had a chance to meet them. And I don't know if they oh, did. Oh, I saw the picture Because the, the, the article that I read with them, the interview, was just, uh, we even had the chance to meet them. But it didn't say definitively if they did actually meet them. <laughs> uh, I saw a picture. I saw a picture of the of uh, of them with Right Said Fred. Oh, so they did meet them then. Yeah, okay, so they did sure. meet them, huh. yeah. Unless it's photoshopped. I mean, you can't trust everything on the internet these days. Hey, you know what? I trust these guys. They're stand-up boys. All you have to do is ask for my quick take. I, I'm asking for your quick take. Oh, oh, my, my quick take. Um, <laughs> uh, I uh, This movie is the Nosferatu of Dracula movies. The original? Or, wait, what does that mean? It's the Nosferatu of Dracula movies. I, I know where you're going. I know. I get the bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a, it's it's a pretty good bit in the movie maybe not so good as a quick take uh, that's okay my quick take is um i it's i didn't really prepare much in the way of that but um I, I just had a great time with it it's it's probably honestly if this telegraphs anything um it's one of my favorite movies that we've reviewed jay jay would you say you had a bloody good time i had a bloody good time well um very respectable. Anybody write down the opening text of the film? Uh, That's usually my job, and I did not do that. Uh, I can tell you the year's 1912. Uh, no, no, I, I didn't either. Oh, and it says Dracula. Something about Dracula? Yes. It, it just sets the scene. Dracula's dead. Um, the Harkers killed him, and they fl- fled to rural America with hopes uh, of a better life for their son, but they were followed. So, what, Mike, you said uh, we, it opens in nineteen twelve. What's going on? Uh, what's going on is uh, you're suddenly jump scared into the the date nineteen twelve floating at you on the screen, mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's fucking great. <laughs> <laughs> and the scene is wait, you want oh, you want more than that? I was hoping you'd go into it a little bit. Well, because let me tell you, okay, so the te- the typeface, not is the type, like ta- Mike, uh, the plot, the plot. Not the not oh, okay. the, not the so, so we so we <laughs> jump into 1912, uh, which is a motif that happens throughout the film. Like it's this thing that jump scares into like anytime someone says a year in the movie, it jumps into 1912, and it like slowly moves towards you, and it's this red. Uh, the typeface is fantastic. He's like, really in this like, typeface. Sure. The shovel sure kind Mike of typeface. Watched the is same fantastic. movie we did. Anyway, but what we jump into is a young boy. Working on the farm at night for some reason. Well. Uh, and suddenly there's scary noises. Ooga booga. Woo! <laughs> Cuckoo! And uh, he's, he's very scared. And then it turns out that there's a, a, a Dracula. Well, a vampire, not a Dracula. <laughs> not a Dracula. Wait, what? It's just a vampire. Because Dracula's dead, remember? But wait, I thought Dracula was a, a species. <laughs> oh boy! There are loads of Draculas in this movie. Chris, can you help? Sorry. Okay. All right. No. No. Sorry. I'll. I'll no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. So there's a vampire, and um, he's he's carrying a he's carrying a head, which I thought was a Frankenstein head, but was not. And I'm, I'm bummed. Kind of it wasn't. But anyway. Mm. So so uh, the the vampire like is like threatening the kid. 
And then kid's papa comes out and is like, I'll fight you with fisticuffs, Dracula. Oh, no, he, sorry, he, vampire. He throws an axe like a boss. He just comes in and flings oh, yeah, this true. big axe. It doesn't do anything, <laughs> but it was cool. There, there's an old timey fight between a, a farmhand and a, a, a vampire. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's very scary because you don't know who's going to win. It's very violent. Do not be afraid, child. And then the, the boy runs away and then daddy gets killed. <laughs> True. But OK, so one of the motifs that they use here early on to introduce the present day characters. Um, Chris, did was it you that mentioned the cutting back and forth between the. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> so it turns out that. Um, the Harker brothers and their friend Ned are putting on a play for a government worker to try to save House Harker. And uh, yeah, it cuts back and forth between the really well lit, really great effects of the, of the Dracula poofing in the mist and reappearing, and then cutting to a $3.78 <laughs> movie, movie uh, like stage with. Uh, Characters in a shitty tuxedo T-shirt and shitty cape as the vampire and uh, looks so dumb, but it, yet so great. It's like the as good as the legit scenes look, like the well, like the, the imagination scenes look. The stage part looks just as shitty, right? But it, purpose, it's like it's supposed to. Yeah, like, yeah. we're not saying it looks bad. Yeah. It, it it's supposed yeah. it's to be supposed a high to. contrast yeah. look. And it, it's a really great contrast yeah. and a great way to begin the movie. And, and it's so well done. Like the editing is fucking fantastic. <laughs> where it's like the camera is panning from left to right across the shitty stage. <laughs> where there's a where there's like temper painted like a house behind these guys and a guy obviously on like a dumb fucking hoist thing. Oh yeah. And, <laughs> And then it and then it cuts through and then it pans over behind a tree and then out of the tree comes the actually super well done special effects of the reality of the play or whatever you want to call it that's going on and then the vampire looks good and he's like flashing into reality and then flashing out with smoke and fog and it's fucking really good yeah <laughs> so and I think oh, Mike as you kind of alluded to um, so you, the shots match at one point too as the vampire yes. dies yeah, yeah and so we're cutting back and forth like the character of Ned <laughs> is playing the vampire and he's in the exact same position as the old timey vampire and they're both screaming and it's cutting back and forth as the vampire is staked <laughs> And it's so good. It's so like it's so solid good. the way they edited that together. It was so cool. And then it's almost like they gave a shit. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like somebody did. Yeah. It turns out that sort of our lead, um, Jerry Parker, um, is like you guys said, is pitching this stage show to a city worker who we find out the city has given them fifty thousand dollars for renovations to turn the house into a historical monument. And instead, they spent it on this play. <laughs> well, they did do some renovations. The bathroom is great. Well, okay. One bit that I find hilarious when he's pitching this story and he's wrapping it up is he holds up what is supposedly uh, this powerful vampire skull with big, long teeth. <laughs> and as he's dramatically yeah. telling the story, one of the teeth falls out. Guys, I could talk about this stage production the whole episode. Uh, well, there's <laughs> there is a lot it. more. There's some very key parts that happen here on this stage. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah it really, it's... It's Chekhov's play, right? It's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> so, Definitely. Um, so then, okay, this is another part that I loved about the overall movie. Okay, so they start going around the house, and she's doing, the, the city worker's doing an inspection. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And they're going through all these things that are wrong. Like, there's glass that is mounted in the door that falls out if you pre pretty much just move the door. Um, they're going to fix it. They're going to fix it. There's a wood chipper in the upstairs hallway. They're going to move it. They're going to move it. They've got a spice rack. They don't understand how spices work. Why are there spices in the fuse box? <laughs> I thought it was a spice rack. <laughs> oh, you can't latch the spice rack. And the thing is, like, you can just tell all of these bits are going to pay off. <laughs> like, or yeah. that they're setting this th stuff up. And I love how they execute all of the payoffs in this movie. But we'll get to it. It's, it's as if... <laughs> They said, how many Chekhov's guns can we have? <laughs> and then, and said, 30? 
<laughs> Fuck it. Let's try. Let's go. Um, <laughs> so the, the city worker says you have one week to reimburse us 50 grand or you lose the house. Right. Yeah. And then that's pretty right. much the that's pretty much takes us up to like the opening credits. I mean, all that happens right up front. One of the brothers, Charlie, is uh, during the stage show is suspended and stuck in the uh, the rig. The, they have this yeah. elaborate <laughs> stage rig that's just sitting on the stage, but it's supposed to lift somebody up, but it doesn't like, really work very wait, well. This is this is Jay. This is what they spent all the money on. The fifty thousand dollars <laughs> are on this stage rig to to hold him up, and it's not far. It's not like it's in a theater where he can go up twenty feet. No, because there's a stage built in the room, so there's less room than if you were on the floor. <laughs> it's in a it's in it's in your house. Imagine your parents' living room, but the ceiling's a foot shorter than that. Right. Probably. And that's where it's at. So they've built this rigging to do that, but also they've built this knife throwing machine. Well, I gotta say, that's where I think that's where a lot of the fifty grand went, because that that looks like a pretty nice knife. Both of those things, Chris. Both of them. When they're outside, we have the neighbor that the neighbors that we have. We have Mavis. Can somebody oh, just describe Mavis? You know what? Maybe you should describe Mavis, Jay. Maybe you need to get off your ass and clean the dog shit out of the ground and be your own person who can describe a person. <laughs> I warned you about that damn dog shitting in my yard. Mavis, that is not our dog. I keep telling you oh, that. Oh, you harkers are all alike, making a mess of everything. Hey, Mike, Mike, what? that would be a lot more convincing if you were holding a shotgun, which Mavis has. Yeah, Mavis enjoys a shotgun. I- I'll shotgun this beer right now. How about that? How about we do this? All right. I'm going to shotgun this beer as I do it again. Oh, oh, boy. In honor of Mavis. All right. Here we go. And it's. Is he going to make it? Oh! That was the perfect description of Mavis. Oh, it's so wet over here now. <laughs> oh. I should point out that Mavis is actually Ned's mom in real life. Oh, really? Wait, oh, yes. wow. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. And so when they were shooting the movie, the cast and crew stayed at the Harker house and at Mavis's house, and she cooked for all of them in addition to doing this role. Wait, 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 wait. Hold the fuck on. Okay. So those two houses are literally next to each other and literally... They got to use both of them? Yes. So, yeah. So, I thought that would be uh, interesting. Uh, Mavis is a lot of fun. We also meet her husband, Walter, who I love. Also guys, a lot of fun. Guys, guys, I fucking love Walter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad to hear you say that. Yeah. Um, what Should we should we talk about Walter now? He, we just meet him. He's just Mavis' husband yeah. right now. Leave those boys alone. Oh, shit. Shut your mouth, you old fart. Walter is this beautiful old man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, with this beautiful white beard. And I thought I knew him from somewhere. I don't think I do. But he just looks like this genial, nice old man that you just want to be friends with. Mm-hmm. You want him to go fishing with you and then, like, catch a fish and then wink and be like, I got this. And that's what you want. <laughs> yes. Uh but but in the reality of the film, it turns out that Walter, the next door neighbor who's married to this um, shrew, mm-hmm. shrew, piece of work, angry, shrill old woman, um, is uh, used to be a priest. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, he has since left the faith. <laughs> because, <laughs> Wait, because this is maybe my favorite sequence of the movie. It really is. It's like the best fucking joke in the movie. This is amazing. Jay, what is it? Go ahead, Jay. What what happens? Why does he leave the priesthood? He leaves the priesthood. He he used to do exorcisms, right? So he is very acquainted with the supernatural. So it shows in a flashback. uh, I believe it's in the 90s, that flashback. I'm not sure. But Uh, I could. Yeah. mm. It looked like the 70s to me. No, 73. Okay, 73. Um. He does exorcism, so he shows up, and it's this dramatic scene, and it's very exorcist, where there's this little girl talking like a demon with black eyes, and she insults him. Father, who art in heaven, dark, which thou be me. The power of Christ compels you. 
The power of Christ compels you. And then you. just pukes all over. <laughs> and as he's talking, he goes to another house, and there's this woman, and she looks similar, demonically possessed. Puke. Next house, another woman. Puke. Like, he left the priesthood because during his exorcisms, he kept getting puked on. <laughs> Terribly puked on. Huge and, and, green chunks. Oh, God. Oh. And insulted. And insulted. Yes, and insulted. Yeah, insulted and the insulted. Like, the funny part's the puke because it's so graphic and disgusting. <laughs> But, <laughs> but but the insulting part it explains how he ended up with Mavis. Yes, this is how genius. Is that? So, oh, how is Chris, that, talk, talk about that. Yeah, when he leaves the priesthood, so, what happens? So he's, le he's left the priesthood, and he's just, like, hanging out on a street corner, or, like, smoking a cigar or something. I don't remember exactly. And this woman just bumps into him. She's carrying groceries and drops all of her groceries everywhere. And then she blames him and starts yelling at him. I couldn't even stand looking at you every day of my life. I'd shoot myself in the face. Golly, I would never want to be a part of your life. You can see in his eyes that he just accepts it and takes her hand yeah. and and just walks her off frame. And as he's walking with her, she's going off on him Jesus. with the same tone that the older Mavis does. It's beautiful. It's so great. It's matched oh, so God. well. Your hair looks like a dog cut it. <laughs> is my favorite line in the oh, entire okay. movie. <laughs> Walter has my favorite line also in the in the movie, but I'm going to wait a little bit to talk about it. But uh, yes, yeah, so everybody loves Walter. And I, I should also say Walter, um, just judging from his IMDb, got into acting very late, like around 60, I believe it was. That's and I read that as well. Can I ask you guys a question? No. How would the movie be different, better or worse, if Bruce Campbell had done uh, Walter? Oh, wow. Interesting question, Jay. Well, and the reason oh, I yeah. ask is because they approached Bruce. Oh, really? They oh, did, wow. but he turned Shit. it down, obviously. But yeah. Uh, yeah, that was the thing. They tried to get Bruce, but I, I think he couldn't do it. I almost think that the guy they got for Walter might have been better. Yeah, I, mean, I think kind be, of maybe. Might be yeah, blasphemy yeah. to say that, but uh, like, he did a really good job. That guy was so fucking good. <laughs> Everything. Like, every every <laughs> mannerism like later in the movie when they're all like having to man up, you know, just like the look on his face when he's just like nodding in slow motion when they're like getting ready. Like he, he just nailed it. Yeah. Like, so great. So this guy, I think also has a leg up on, on Bruce Campbell, you know, rest, rest his soul. RIP. Bruce Love isn't him. dead. The reason I think he did better <laughs> is that he looks old. Bruce doesn't look that old. I mean, he yeah. looks old, but this guy has like a nice white bearded chin He's got the balded head kind of situation. Very Herschel, like Walking Dead Herschel. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. He's got that, like, totally. you want him to be your next door neighbor because he'll help you with things. And he's a sweet guy and you want to help him with things. And you just connect with him. Bruce Campbell, I don't want to help him. I just want him to say witticisms mm -hmm. at me. It would be a very <laughs> different all I care feel. about that character. Very yeah. different. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I agree. Sorry. I think I, I'm happy that, like, the way it turned out. Absolutely. Um, we also meet a couple other main characters here. Um, we meet Paige, who is the Harker brothers sister mm -hmm. and her fiance, Wayne, who is the sheriff. Let me stop you right there. Okay, Gil. It's that kind of talk that causes pandemonium in this town. The legends, the stories, they really freak folks out. I also appreciated how they executed the character of Wayne, like not killed him, but like how <laughs> it was played. You kind of assume that Wayne is going to be a bit of a douche. Because he's yeah, the competition yeah, yeah. for Ned, you know, in, in love with Paige. But he's not. He's just super he's nice just the all the time. He's guy. <laughs> oh, my God. And he just he totally just wants to get along with Ned so bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But Ned, Ned's just kind of a dick to him because he likes Paige. Right. It, it makes... It makes Ned, who who in all my notes is is just listed as George Carlin, because um, <laughs> he looks just like young George Carlin. <laughs> nice. Um, but but Ned, as much as he is possibly my favorite character, main character at least, I like him of the main group the most. I think, but he is also comes off as just like. Like, fucking give it up, dude. Wayne's super nice. <laughs> like, deal with it. Paige, Paige is a babe. I get it. But, like, fucking man, just let Wayne treat. He's, he's got, he's making money. You're not, dude. Just like, Are you whatever. trying to say like, his, wood carp his wood sculptures aren't selling? 
<laughs> no, I am. I'm well, saying that they're they're chipper feed. Well, <laughs> what do you and mean? Indeed, they are. Chris, do you like that segue? <laughs> <laughs> nice. We get to find out about Ned's wood. Yeah, talk about Ned's wood and what happens if if his sculptures aren't selling. What is happening with Ned's wood carvings? Well, I mean, uh, so Wayne offers to drive Ned to work. Oh, hey, want to take a ride in the squad car? Get you there in a jiffy. Oh, we all know you're a big shot now, Wayne, but I don't need your charity because Wayne is such a nice guy, and Ned just doesn't want to do it. But Wayne's a sweetheart. Him. He is yeah, a sweet. He's great. a smoothie. So Nate, uh, Nate, <laughs> God damn it! So so Ned eventually takes Wayne up on his offer. He goes to work at the hardware store, and he sees all of his wood carvings have been sold, like three hundred dollars each. Ned is rolling in it. He'll finally be able to win over Paige because he's got some cash. He goes in, and this. Like I said before, the hardware store is creepy. <laughs> Specifically why it's creepy is the entire sh- scene of him going into the hardware store is him casually throwing off his jacket, getting these things ready, and walking down. And suddenly you have these, like, those, like, not jump scares, but those horror shots of, like, it jump cuts to something running across an aisle or something like that, or a hallway. It, it's filmed way more horror than the rest of the film is. Like, <laughs> like it's super, it's, so good. it's not super cliche horror, like, which is yeah. perfect. Like, it's fantastic. Because yeah. they, they know what they're doing. It's like, that's the intent. And eventually he runs into someone, and when he's talking to him, at some point he jump scares to a wider shot where there's someone else there, too. Like, it's fucking just, like... It's very well done, mm. and also it's a bummer that the guy who they, for some reason, let have his his wood sculptures out front for sale is getting fired, but yes. I guess he was late too many times, maybe is what it was, I don't know. So afterwards, they're at a bar, they're drinking, and yeah. uh, um, we learn a little bit more about uh, Jerry and his experiences as an actor. Um, when they're they're watching TV, hey, he's in a hit movie. A hit movie, you say? Well, what is this hit movie about? <laughs> Twirl. Twirl, baby. Twirl. Isn't it the October Sky of baton twirling movies? Uh, yeah, I believe it's a lot of things of baton twirling movies. I think it was supposed to be the Billy Elliot of baton twirling movies. <laughs> uh, also, I believe it was the Karate Kid of baton twirling movies. <laughs> yes, and Twirl is a, a fi- fictional film, obviously, on the Life Mark Network, um, where <laughs> Jerry was the lead, and he is a sensitive twirling boy, and everyone laughs at him. <laughs> <laughs> I and believe the bartender Jerry, I'm says, not laughing uh, at you, Jerry. I'm laughing at <laughs> what Jay said, but not about you, I swear. Does the, does the bartender see the commercial and just say, What a piece of shit! What a piece of shit! Yeah. <laughs> oh, Everyone God. laughs them oh, out of the bar so pretty funny. much. Oh, God. No one in the town likes them. No. But there's an important plot point here where, the, as they're watching the TV, we get a news report of, uh, I forget the exact name, the the necrophilia killer or something. Yeah. Yeah. Who, uh, (laughs) I love the line that the sheriff warns, even if he kills you, you're still not safe. (laughs) Now, 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 Chris, I, I did hear that and I wrote that down, but I wrote that down with a question mark because I don't understand what that means. Can you explain what that means? (laughs) Well, I'm surprised you don't have a kink tank for this, Mike. Oh. No, I don't. No, I don't have a kink tank for this. Chris, do you have a kink tank for this? Well. Kink tank. Me. Ow. Well, you see, Mike, the act of necrophilia is the act of performing love upon a corpse. Some, you know, <laughs> upon a corpse? <laughs> upon a corpse. Which is the ultimate, <laughs> the ultimate form of objectification. Okay, you have the corpse lying there purely for your pleasure, and could, <laughs> could be apparently the necro the necrophilia killer in this movie prefers the bodies warm and cooling down. Others might pref- prefer them a little colder or straight dug up from a grave. Who knows? There are several subsets of this kink. Wow! And this has been Kink Tank. <laughs> Chris, that was the uh, Citizen Kane of necrophilia <laughs> descriptions. Yes, it was. 
Glad I could add something to this podcast. Well done. <laughs> so they get home, and sure enough, the very same... I believe he's the Nix County Necro. He is in House Harker. He's ready for some loving. It's the Nix County Necro! He's gonna kill us then, fucking... He's going off on him. <laughs> we were on some kind of freaky, sneaky, kinky sex show here. It's a family show. <laughs> we should also point out that he messes with the real vampire skull and bleeds on it. What the fuck is that? Now, the thing is, this begs the question, how long has the the, the, the necro killer been there, and did he have his way with a skull? Oh, You'd Chris. think he would. I mean, come on, I'm just asking the important questions. Well, it's the one thing not answered by this movie. I mean, it's got a tighter, like, because the teeth are, like, the front vampire teeth, not the, like, canines, but the two, the kind of front. So talk about right. how the knife so well, you can figures get your dick in, in there, like, real, like. <laughs> so, Chris, you gotta squeeze what it as with the teeth? knife, Chris. You gotta squeeze so, that so ding dong. So, color is yanking on this, on this rope, on the rig, despite <laughs> the giant don't pull sign that we mentioned. And the knife shoots across the room, stabs the killer right in the neck. And the Harker boys and Ned are like, no, don't pull it out, don't pull it out. But the necro killer is not one to listen to logic. Yeah, the necro reason. killer then pulls out his dick. No. <laughs> God damn it, Mike. We hard cut to Romania. A spirit flies through the streets and something, <laughs> some spirit awakens in Romania. Talk about the guys cleaning up the body because they have a body to clean Oh, this is one of my favorite parts. <laughs> God, this is my, one of my favorite Go parts. for it, Chris. F fucking Ned. Okay, there's blood spilled everywhere. I mean, this guy is almost drained. And Ned, uh, what are you going to clean up blood with? <laughs> He's just got paper towels. He's just Not paper towels, Chris. They were paper towels. Yeah, but don't use them. You can't oh, do it. There's well, so yeah, much well, blood. I know. And that's what Charlie comes out and says, no, use the shop vac. Yeah. And so he uses the shop vac to clean up the blood. He does a really great job. He does. Yeah. And very wouldn't good. you know, Mavis is watching from the window. Something's yeah. going on. My favorite gag, though, is Ned puts the shop vac just in the pool of blood oh, yeah. and runs off to do something else. <laughs> yeah. And as soon as the last bit of blood is, is sucked into the vacuum, the hose just goes flying around and latches onto the, the killer's uh, neck wound. <laughs> <laughs> so keeps good. all the blood out of his body, setting up mm -hmm. the rest of the movie. Yeah, mm -hmm. it really it's is so like great. a very important part of the film. <laughs> it it, really it is. seems like a dumbass joke, but it is <laughs> it super is, important but it's for the so rest good. of the film. It's, it's <laughs> so good. great. I loved it. Right. So Walter shows up, and they pretty much just sort of talk him out of the out of the broom. You know, he he was just sent over by Mavis. He has no choice. Walter, those Harkers are up to something. I know it. Damn it, Mavis. Leave them boys be. Get over there now, or I'll smother you in your sleep. The Harker boys... Okay, this is good, too. They dump... <laughs> they, they take the body, and they take it to <laughs> a bridge, and there's a river underneath... <laughs> But there's river? Is it, it a river? It's more like a creek, I'd say. Yeah, it's like a stream or a creek at the most. They fully believe, yeah, they fully believe that, that this body is going to flow into Lake Superior. And it's this creek with these huge rocks in it. Like, the body barely <laughs> floats yeah. anywhere. It would not be a worse place. It just floats on this, like, inch of water <laughs> down this fucking stream. <laughs> and it's immediately found by the uh, the sheriff's yeah. deputy. Yeah, We're always hanging out on. in the woods. Yeah, one of them pees yeah. on it. <laughs> found a body. <laughs> the other one is sitting on a uh, sitting and reading a book called Succulent, which is... Oh, <laughs> this one is of my favorite oh, yeah. series ever. Yeah, this, this is supposed to be um, another sort of sub plot that comes up and it's a play on twilight of course um with the sparkly vampires sparkly vampires quickly then we get to a diner where the guys are a little nervous they meet up with Paige and wayne um the body has been found and we get a confrontation between a chad who's a, a bully a town bully and charlie and we learn a little bit more about how charlie talks to a pencil a very important plot point Again, pencils, his best friend, his dad gave him this pencil. Guys, I didn't, I enjoyed the pencil thing throughout and I'm not going to say it now, but when it came down to the point, ha ha pencil, um, whoa, whoa. I didn't, I was surprised. <laughs> yeah. And I feel stupid for being surprised, but also <laughs> like good on the filmmaker. So yeah, um, pretty much like we just have this confrontation with, with your Chad sort of setting him up as 
the bully who picks on Charlie. Hey, dipshits, pencil. I'm Chad. I'm gonna pay my bill with you and then snap you in half. Like, I really genuinely hated that guy. <laughs> did a good job. He did a good job, yeah. So back in Romania, we have a gangster throwing body parts into a bush. Oh, yeah, the gangsters. Pretty much just like a, the vampire is formed and he kills some gangsters and splatters some dudes. So the vampire's on the move. We are with Wayne. Wayne goes to the... I, I, he's kind of a doctor slash coroner, I guess. And this is what ignites the vampire panic. Because um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the blood is missing. They talk about it. Wayne swears the doctor to secrecy. So there's no way this is going to get out. Absolutely not. Not even, if no. the, not even if the doctor goes to the bar, even though he's a recovering alcoholic and is offered yeah. booze. He's not going to mm -hmm. tell. Right? No, it's covered by the Hippocratic Oath, I believe. I believe so, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think Wait, you're right. Wait, no, it's not. That oh. That's about do, don't do harm or something. Nothing Wait a minute. about okay. talking. Is, it, is that the reason oh. why the the rumors spread like wildfire and the moms in the park that are drinking booze say it's probably <laughs> a gangbang thing? It was probably a drive-by, you know, like one of those gangbang things. <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> we have the mob outside of City Hall that, because of one of the deputies, ends up, the mob ends up at the Harker house. And they, at first, have no idea what's going on. Where do they come from? Have they been here the whole time? How do we stop them? What are they, terrorists? The crowd starts to just disperse. They leave. And believing that the Harkers don't know anything, and they can't help. Because they're the, supposed to be the vampire people. Yeah. Then the Harkers are talking, and Ned and the, the gang are talking about, oh... You know, I knew this would happen. This is a disaster. We this we dump this body. In walks Mavis. She's got a shotgun out. Two fucking buckshots in there. She's ready to fucking take things into her own wrinkled hands. Uh, get back in here and shut the fuck up. I know what you did. I saw it with my own eyes. How does this play out? Do the Harkers uh, get killed or what, what goes on? Uh, no, Mavis is, uh, she's not having a very good time. I think all this excitement is getting to her, oh. and she she sets the shotgun down, still yelling at everyone about what she's going to do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She falls over and had a heart attack or something. I mean, she just fell over dead. Just nasty yep, till she, the end. She went out how she lived. Mm-mm. Oh, dude. And this, can I just say another Walter highlight here? As soon as she's dead, he stands up and turns around and lights a cigar. <laughs> yes, he does. It's so great. And he's like, boys, we got to talk. For the, for the viewer, uh, this is before we understand why he met her. Like, right. we don't know why. <laughs> Why they're married yet. We don't know that he got vomited on so many times that he just married the first woman that yelled at him. Oh. Yet. It's soon. It's soon. This is but this is this is really where we understand that Walter is going to be a main character yes. in the film. It's yeah, beautiful because yeah. he, he says something to the effect of I got boys, I got an idea, woodshed. And so yes. they, they take Mavis to the woodshed because Oh my god. Oh, <laughs> it's man. so what fucking good. They are going to Walter lays Walter pretty much lays out the whole plan. What they're going to do is drill holes into Mavis's neck to make it look like a vampire attack. Then he's going to call the police saying his wife is dead and the Harkers are going to and Ned are going to come out <laughs> and say they stopped the vampire. And so they're the heroes. He's rid of Mavis and it's all good. So in the shed they're trying to decide who drills. God damn it. <laughs> and so Charlie ends up with the drill because he's the only one oh, who doesn't yeah. care. And I, I love how, like, when he's getting ready to drill, they're standing there just going to get blood all over him. And Walter slowly <laughs> raises a tarp. Got the tarp. Yeah, behind, he's standing behind. Yeah, he's behind he's the, the tarp. tarp behind. And so Charlie drills the hole into her neck and blood goes everywhere. Like, it sprays everywhere. all three of them. And yeah. then... Walter lowers the tarp and says, yep. One down. And he yeah, and he raises it back up. It's so, it's so good. good. <laughs> it's so fucking good. Oh, so if if I may, there's, this is leading to probably my favorite line of the film. So if, if you don't mind, I, I want to describe what happens here like it's another hey jay yeah hey jay yeah mike what's your favorite what's your favorite line of the film i'm gonna tell you um <laughs> walter lays out the whole plan in this montage and we're seeing it play out but jerry screws it up 
by saying because the, nobody <laughs> believes that they killed this vampire like it doesn't work so he says they're gonna capture the vampire we'll, we'll capture it and we'll, we'll show it to you okay we're gonna catch the vampire and you can all see for yourselves okay and so we cut oh, to a yeah. scene where it's the next day and they're all saying well, you know, Jerry, you screwed up the plan, and Walter says... Well, that wasn't exactly in this script, Jerry. It's beginning to feel now like we drilled a hole in my wife's neck for no reason. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> that that line just hit me. I, I, I don't know why that line just landed with me, but I thought... I, I laugh out loud every time that he says that. It's just, like, almost a throwaway line, but it's so funny. So, yeah. good job, it's, Walter. It's very good. Um, and then we get into the whole priest thing. Well, we meet the priest thing, yes, but then was also where we meet Stacy Mendler. Yeah. The author the, of the best-selling Succulent series. You got it. And she's trying to yeah. write real-life vampire literature. She's very in tune. They are fair. They are sparkly. They are misunderstood. Yes. And 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 she says that anyone who, who talks badly about vampires are what, Jay? I'm sorry. Flat out racism. Racist. Oh, racist. Yes. <laughs> she says they're 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 con artists and frankly racist. And so yeah, so she now vows that her book tour is going to go through Leechwood, and she is going to prove that the Harkers are con artists. And so yeah. while she's vowing that, Ned come and and the guys come up with a plan where well, it's Jerry's idea. He's going to hire his coach from Twirl. <laughs> <laughs> to play a vampire, and then they're going to capture him in front of everybody, proving that they are heroes. Because there's no way that could go wrong. Right, right. No. So, but um, it will save the house. It will help them raise the fifty grand that this is ultimately for. Yes, and that and that's true. And 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 Chris, I would like you right now to describe what happens when Ned comes downstairs with oh, what he calls boy. vampire hunting clothes. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so Ned thinks that everyone needs costumes if they're going to really <laughs> play the part of vampire hunters. If we're going to be vampire hunters, we are going to look good. So picture your stereotypical movie vampire hunting outfit, like from your, say, an like anime. Like Underworld or, or something. Very stylish leather, a long kind of trench coaty kind of thing. Think about how awesome that is. And then picture the exact opposite of that <laughs> while trying to be the same thing. <laughs> Halloween pop-up store kind of seasonal shop kind of Halloween costume. <laughs> yes. Ned's trying to look badass and he gets costumes for the other two, which amounts to a jumpsuit and steampunk kind of goggles. And then Jerry gets like a Robin Hood outfit. Jay, can you put the quote in where, where Jerry says... I look like the Robin Hood of fetish porn. <laughs> please. I feel like the Robin Hood of fetish porn. I would like to hear it again, please. I feel like the Robin Hood of fetish porn. Oh, th oh thank you. Ned clearly <laughs> took the coolest costume for himself. God. It's clearly played for life. Yeah, he, he builds <laughs> them weapons. Um, well, he, he builds himself. He takes his chainsaw <laughs> and just puts wooden spikes coming out of it, like in all directions. Oh my God. Like there's, and like Jerry even calls it out. Like, is that even going to work? Yeah, Charlie's like, nope. <laughs> and Jerry gets a wooden baton to twirl. <laughs> it's the shittiest, cheapest looking. Yeah. And what does it say? Twirl, baby, twirl. <laughs> oh my God. I loved it. So then, oh, so um, good. we get a quick scene of the vampire who has traveled like to show Chicago, and now, boom, he's in Leechwood as their show is getting ready to start. The The news is there. Um, Stacy Mendeler, the author, shows up and confronts the guys on the back porch, but yet stays for the party. Um, yeah, of course. Well, because she's got to expose them as, as a hoax. Yeah. and and Because I mean, real vampire, I mean, she can detect a real vampire. Uh, absolutely, she, she can. a sense absolutely. that helps her detect vampires. I can sense their presence, you know? I mean, if one was near, it's like I could feel him. <laughs> yeah, their show's about to start. And what's cool is you, all the characters, all the side characters you see from the beginning, because uh, we're really heading into Act 3, um, all the characters from the rest of the movie are at the show, mostly to see the Harkers yeah. fail. Yes, <laughs> um, yes they are. And, and we should probably also point out here that uh, Tanner, who is the coach, is driving in uh, to Leechwood mm -hmm. to be the vampire, 
listening to some right said Fred. That really got me got me you know pumped for the rest of the movie. Yeah, and the real vampire shows up and kills yeah, him. He kills him. Wastes yeah. him yeah. hard. Holds him down, sucks him dry. That's right. As they say. <laughs> as 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 a good person should. <laughs> <laughs> um so everyone's there, everything's ready. Uh, they still think Tanner's going to show up, but now Jerry wants to back out because the door only made 1200 bucks, and he just now feels it's all his fault. They're going to lose the house. Everything is crashing yeah. down on him. Who gives him the pep talk? This is a very important scene. Oh, Charlie gives him the pep talk. Yeah. Yep. I mean, but by... Th- Wait, no, before that, though, t- slightly before that, Chris, you're right. The sister, yeah, the sister finds out, the government worker tells uh, tells Paige that uh, they're losing the house, and she gets pissed and has it out with Jerry. She had no idea. The The broker says, oh, you're going to lose the house, Paige, and she's pissed off, tells Jerry. That's why Jerry, Jerry gets mad or gets sad. Yeah, he's sad. Really, about that. But then, between, <laughs> between these other parts, the real vampire shows up. Yes. And he and and they think he is Tanner the the actor from from <laughs> yes. Tw- yeah, yeah, yeah. They think and he's in just like, makeup. Oh. He's in he's he's <laughs> yeah. in Daniel Day-Lewis style fucking method actor. So I mean, this guy's a really great acting coach. So And I mean, so they drag him down. Sense. He goes downstairs into the basement. Uh and then so they think it's just that actor. <laughs> so he is horrifying looking. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And that's where uh, then the rest of this, like, Charlie gives uh, gives Jerry a pep talk of like, oh, you should really try better, brother. You're OK. Yeah. Dad believes in kind you. of garbage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's all that kind of shit. And but what's really happening is everyone's about to get murdered. Right. <laughs> well, not before Ned unveils his shitty wood carving of Paige. Oh, it's excuse it's nice. you. <laughs> Excuse you? <laughs> I'm sorry. A very nice wood carving of Paige. It was heartfelt. With huge, huge <laughs> breasts. Listen, it's like, you're, it's like the rest of the rest of the carving is fairly abstract, with the arm pointed up that's begging to be used as a stake, and but just giant breasts. You're my beautiful mermaid. Yes, and he unveils it at the worst possible moment when they're yes. when they're fighting, and she is not in the mood for it, and he declares no. his his love for her, and. Pretty much just gets shut down right out front of in front of everybody. Jesus, Ned, not now. Yeah, P- Paige doesn't like a- a- in any way Ned's Woody. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no. Um, Ned's Wood is not a popular thing. So no. we see the vampire and find the skull, which is the one thing that he's not supposed to get a hold of, and he gets it. Totally gets a hold of it. Oh, we didn't. Wait, wait, hold, well, guys, boys, 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 boys. We didn't talk about this. This is very important, actually, for the lore of the film. Mm -hmm. At the very beginning, when it's the great-great-grandfather of the Harkers, blah, 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 fighting the the vampire, he's like, why are you, how are you here? I killed Count Dracula. He's like, yes. The Dracula says, or the vampire says, yes, I killed, you killed Count Dracula, but I, I crushed his skull and consumed it. Thus giving me his power, mm-hmm. which is like the main point in this film. <laughs> <laughs> yes. If the vampire gets, if a vampire gets the skull and inhales the ashes, he can make more vampires. Of his master. Yeah. Right. Of, of the master. Right. Yeah, so right. like Count Dracula was the master. This guy. Blah, blah, blah. So, so this now Dracula the, or vampire. Sorry. I, I get confused <laughs> about the terms. <laughs> Somebody's never read succulent. I, you know, it's on my list. <laughs> So this this vampire is goes down to the the basement, which the, all the boys are like, yeah, go down there and hide, because they think he's like their friend, <laughs> right? And goes down there, finds the hidden skull, because it's he's drawn to it, yeah, obviously. it's calling him, and then crushes it and just <sighs> like a hot dog, just sucks <laughs> it down, more like a cloud that he's vaping or something, but well, but it's National Hot Dog Day when we're recording this, so oh, okay, all right. Fans can look that up. Anyway, um, so yeah, who's the so the, the vampire goes upstairs. The boys are outside, you know, getting given the pep talk. The bartender from the bar is talking to the author of Succulent, who is Chris. I have a feeling that you really enjoyed this little part here. Oh yeah, because I mean, she can totally sense the presence of a vampire. Right. She just can totally tell 
whenever a vampire is around. <laughs> except when a real vampire is behind her. Right. <laughs> pulls her head aside and just holds her down and sucks her dry. That's right. That's, holds her down yeah. and sucks her dry. And then she becomes a vampire. Am I sparkling? Am I sparkling? Uh, and then the head vampire just punches her head out. He doesn't just punch her head out. Like... Or he does do that, but the script, that is a, an accurate description, not detailed enough, because it is <laughs> the best effect in the entire fucking movie. Mm. <laughs> it is pretty because, good. Because he, he bites her in the neck, she falls down, she stands up and says, am I sparkly? And then the main vampire punches her in the back of the head, but continues through where all her skin is ripped off. And all you see is a skull with muscle and a bone afterwards. And it is fucking amazing. <laughs> and then the vampire just goes crazy on literally everyone inside the house. It is just a free for all. Everyone is getting bitten and the people that are getting bitten are turning into vampires and biting other people. Yeah. So I think it's saved like, like the 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 first two thirds of the movie are f fairly, I mean I still think I would call the pacing quick, relatively speaking, but it's more about the characters and learning and this build up. Once yeah, this yeah. vampire gets in the house, it's just balls to the wall pretty much oh, the it, rest of the movie. They, yeah, they they put on fast forward at this point. Yeah, and, and in yeah. a good way, like in a properly good way, like not in a bad way, but just like yeah, yeah. If if everything else was we, 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 what you're right it was quickly paced it was uh, perfectly wonderfully paced but at some point this thing happens and they're just like well let's get the double bass drum out let's go <laughs> <laughs> right so it's a complete mess now in the house well don't forget while this is happening the Harker brothers and Ned are talking with the sheriff with Wayne and Wayne is like asking <laughs> Ned for an apology he's like I know you love her okay I've learned to accept that but why can't you accept me and stop being so dick on me all the time! I love Wayne! He just wants to get along with Ned so bad. <laughs> He's okay with Ned loving his fiance. <laughs> While everyone is inside the house just <laughs> dying. <laughs> and, then, and then it turns out all Jerry's worried. He hears the commotion inside the house and he's like, Oh man, is everybody leaving already? Right, right. Yeah. So that, yeah, they, they open the door and just get rushed, right? And they shut it and... We quickly discover that I think it was they said the grandfather had built the house yeah. in a way, and they yeah. he put crosses on every I doorknob. This was really clever, yeah, on every doorknob, every window. So when a vampire gets in, they can't get out. So <laughs> Ned's like, "We're home free." Sun comes up, they're fried. Come on, fellas. First round's on way. Uh, guys? Yeah, they try to go to the bar. They try to go to the yeah. bar. Problem solved. <laughs> Wait till sunrise. Yep, but. <laughs> Then I think it's Wayne who remembers that Paige is in the house. Yeah. She's yeah. in her room she's packing. She's upstairs packing. Yeah, because she's gonna, she thinks she's going to lose the house and she's mad at everybody. So uh, <laughs> I think Ned Ned calls her, right? Yeah, yeah Ned calls like her. Like a dumb shit. Let's let everyone know, let all the vampires know, there's someone upstairs. Right, right. So then, and this is what I alluded to earlier, when the guy, this is about the part where... Um, the guys have to man up and it's this like slow motion scene where they're all looking at each other and it's dramatic and Walter's just like nodding and he's like, yeah, you got to do this. <laughs> Walter is so fucking good. Well, before that, though, Wayne rushes in with his gun to save Paige. Oh, right, 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 and right. Ned, and Ned just closes <laughs> yeah. the door behind him because he sees all the vampires and like, nope. <laughs> and then you hear it's like, I'm sure he's OK. Opens the door. Wayne is just getting mauled. And and I got to I want to give a little bit of credit to whoever was on the special effects for this one shot because <laughs> Ned opens the door and closes it oh, relatively yeah, quickly. Yeah. And whoever yeah. was behind that door had a little gun or something to shoot Ned in the face with a spray of blood. <laughs> yeah, and it is yeah. so effective cuz it's so fast. <laughs> so it's beautiful. Yeah. He opens the door, boom, gets hit in the face, shuts the door. It's it's awesome. <laughs> one of my favorite thing, one of my favorite bits in the movie is is the they're trying they need to get up to Paige. So they need to get, they need to get rid of the vampires, right? Mm -hmm. So they come up with a plan. They they sneaky sneaky come up with a plan. <laughs> we we see some stuff. We don't understand it. The 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 priest Walter Walter who was previously a priest does says some weird words over the hose. 
He he blesses he blesses the faucet like the, yeah. the outside spigot <laughs> and where the it, the garden hose is attached yes. to. Yeah. And so then they open the door and then like all a bunch of vampires run out and <laughs> and they're like they're supposed to spray with the sprinkler cuz they uh, apparently blessed it they get holy water which is hey, well. one, one of the funniest fucking things I've ever thought of. <laughs> I, I've never well, thought of that. It's well, so fucking I think, good. I th- I think with Walter's vast experience fighting the demonic forces of the occult he's learned a trick or two yeah and that is don't bless the water bless the faucets exactly all he's the water a smart man out of it it's like that, holy water it's yeah. like an old adage like measure twice cut once right mm-hmm. and so bless once kill many yes and, but the problem is, it's not working. <laughs> no. Like the, the sprinkler is not spraying anything, and they're trying to find it. They got to find it. Like, Ned why isn't it working? Is and they find a kink in the hose, and they unkink the hose, and, and then the it most dramatic shot it. ever. It's, Charlie and finds it works. the kink. <laughs> it totally works. I was worried it wouldn't work in the in the in the reality of the film. Like, what is going to happen? Are is it is this going to be like a bump a bummer? Or is this going to be a, a fucking hot, hot tip? That's one thing I really liked about the movie is that all the plans they have generally worked. <laughs> they didn't spend yeah. a lot of time, like, fooling around and, like, fighting and stuff. They just, like, knock out, like, 70, 80 percent of the vampires with their holy water trick. Yeah. And, and they, it's just it, like, we're not even going to bother fighting them. We're just going to knock them all out and move on. And, and I like, think the it, pace just goes. I think that's what set it, sets us apart from, like, a lot of, like comedy horror stuff of, of the sense that like I don't not really at any point does anything not work like that's a lot of like comedy horrors like oops my plan didn't work but like everything works sometimes not in the way they want it to like we will eventually <laughs> discuss in that chainsaw thing that we oh, haven't talked dude, about I can't, yes we have to talk about the chainsaw thing but yes. but like but it still works right like it's not like everything still works like they're not they're dumb but not incompetent like is the thing <laughs> yeah and that's the usual trope of like a comedy horror is like oh, I'm, I'm a stupid person and like i love how this is not that so after the holy water plan, they head into the basement, right? So w- one little interesting fact is that you know they're of course fighting tons of vampires in the basement, and um, Walter. There's just one, one very well endowed <laughs> vampire in the basement. And you know, here's the thing: I got to give a shout out to my wife Erin because she noticed that the busty vampire had a tattoo on her chest, and she and I have confirmation from one of the actors in the film, Ned, that. Um, Aaron is the only person to have gotten this or have noticed this. What? Yeah. I got this joke. <laughs> I got this joke 100%. The tattoo across her boobs is yeah? uh, the author's name, the succulent That's author's name. That's a joke. <laughs> no, that is a joke. Right. Well, if I you got it, the then you, maybe you're the second person. Well, in my defense, I was not looking at the tattoo. When the author shows up, some the, everyone's running up to her and someone goes, can you sign me boobs, sign me boobs? And it's that woman. Did she do that? I didn't even, I didn't notice that. 100%. She asked, yes, really? 100% that happens. Yes. <laughs> oh, absolutely. okay. Hey, Jay, Jay, yeah. to prove it to yourself, put that clip in. <laughs> Mike, what can I say? You're right. Uh, you know? I didn't notice that. You and Aaron got it. I only got it on my second watch through, so, you know, well, it's fair. But you know what? Me and Aaron, I owe her a shot of Malort. I'm <laughs> sure she'll like that. <laughs> oh, um, God. So, yeah, so pretty much, again, from here, there's huge fighting and and the vampires are one thing i love is that the vampires are popping and jerry yes, sc- yes, yes, yes. <laughs> jerry screams why are they popping and walter replies they always do that <laughs> That's just what vampires. Yeah, are. they're popping. Why are they popping? <laughs> and if I may, the thing you know, you guys mentioned how the plans generally work and they're not dumb. The steak chainsaw. The steak saw. The steak saw. Yeah. I mean, it worked. It totally it worked. worked. It did not how it he totally wanted worked. it, but it did. <laughs> it's the dumbest looking thing. It just, there's no way it could no, work. But and there's it no worked. way it works. But stakes <laughs> flew off of this chainsaw in every direction. Killed like yeah. seven vampires. It looked so awesome. It was great. <laughs> so, so if I may, if I may, like edit down this fight scene because you know it's, it's a lot a of good gags in the fight scene. scene. Yeah. If I may say. Walter Walter gets intense and he he's like 
go, just go, mm-hmm. and makes them go save Paige. Right, he sacrifices so, himself. Sacrifice himself. But Walter, can we talk about Walter's tattoo? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Fine. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Fuck yeah. As, after he tells everyone to go, he's about ready to sacrifice himself. He has tattooed a crucifix on his chest, and <laughs> it's so great. <laughs> and the vampires who are at first afraid, and then others come from either side. Right, really they can't see. They get him. But, they, they but get at least, Walter. at least as he dies, he touches yeah. his nipples. Yeah, he's got. He's, <laughs> Tweaking the nips as he goes down. Also, really important and quick here, Charlie learns to actually defend himself, because that's Charlie's whole thing, is sort of like empowerment. And he confronts Chad, and Chad, the bully, runs at him. And and this is the thing, this is the thing I love, is that he shuts the door, and Chad gets his head cut off by the (laughs) glass that they were supposed to replace. All of the bits that they set up pay off throughout the whole movie. Yes, it's the, it's the so spice tight. rack. Yeah, the wood chipper. Right, right, right. The, uh, yeah, the everything. Yeah, it's Chekhov's shit house. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But okay, all right. So so Walter sacrifices himself. Ned pees himself trying to defend someone. Yeah, he's stuck under a big hairy vampire. Yeah, because he kills him uh, and the guy falls on him. Page yeah, but it's out. important to note. It's important to note that Ned does piss himself. Yes, it is important. Listeners, he, they'll deny it later. Listeners, but he does. Ned pisses himself, <laughs> almost like I did earlier, but I didn't. Um, <laughs> but thank God. But in this whole thing, this whole bit of this is them trying to save Paige, right? Who turns out to be a fucking Donatello Ninja Turtle badass. Oh yeah, <laughs> she's got a fucking. Which, P.S. Just fucking Paige, by the way, you may also recognize from the Birdemic series. Yeah. Wanted to throw that out there. Yep. She she has redeemed herself. Yes, basically. with this movie. Yes. Paige, wait, way to go. Wait, wait. Hudson. Wait, Hudson. Is that yep. all you know her from? Uh, I looked at her IMDb and I don't remember if there was anything oh, else that looked familiar. That's from. interesting. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> what do you got, Mike? You might know her from Vampire the Masquerade. Oh, yeah. LA oh, yeah, by Night. Well, isn't that a 2019 Vampire the Masquerade? Yeah, maybe thing? get off your I'm fucking ass sure. and watch is that it, shit. Is you that love it. You got a shirt. Is, is it out? Yes. Oh, oh, what? Oh. Well, you do have right, a vampire shirt, Chris. I do have a vampire shirt. No, I was a big not fan. just a vampire shirt, Chris. I have a Vampire the, the Masquerade shirt. I played the hell out of Vampire the Masquerade in high school. And well, Love L.A. You wore LA the shirt. L.A. by yeah. Night apparently is a TV shirt. series they made, and she plays Theresa... Hold on. Vorman? All right, so guys, Ned got bit. Ned gets bit. <laughs> it's sad. He's trying to throw vampires into the wood chipper, and out of everybody that gets him... Well, this is cool. This is... Well, okay. Wayne grabs him and hauls him outside... And they fight. Vampire Wayne. Vampire Wayne. Vampire Wayne. And Ned, Vampire Wayne is not as nice as non-vampire. Wayne. Well, it's true. only slightly less nice because <laughs> slightly, yeah, true. because <laughs> they're fighting on the on the front lawn, and and Vampire Wayne is going to kill him, and then notices the beautiful statue. Oh, is that Paige? That's so beautiful. He's the only yeah. person who yeah. appreciates the wood carving, and that gives Ned <laughs> Fuck, the chance dude. to stake him. Oh, it's, God damn but, it. But an important important distinction, though, Ned stakes Vampire Wayne in the shoulder, not the heart. Right, yes. And that'll, that'll come into play a little yes. bit later. Yes, Right, so then upstairs we have, uh, like, Jerry has apologized to Paige for everything. There's, you know, pretty much like, it's kind of funny because Jerry's in the middle of all this war apologizing and having this heartfelt conversation while Paige and Charlie are killing vampires around him. <laughs> and, uh, Jerry's not doing too much shit, right? No, like, no, he's, he's helping some. He's repairing his relationship with Paige. <laughs> he does have his baton twirling th- bit where he yeah. just twirls so badly and stakes one of the vampires, but that was, you know, a few minutes prior. Yeah. The real vampire shows up, right? And yeah, yes, of course. Bites Ned. You gotta have the final showdown. It's the final showdown. Bites Ned. And not just bites, not just bites Ned, turns Ned. Yes. Ned turns into a vampire. Ned actually becomes a vampire. Yeah, it, he becomes like a fucking force to be reckoned with, which is unfortunate. Yeah. And also the main vampire has force powers, apparently. Yeah, yep. he's yeah. choking Jerry with a uh, with the force. 
And, yeah. and honestly, uh, Mike, that was foreshadowed earlier when he pulls the vampire skull out of the box using. Yeah, the that's you're right, true. You're right. That's so true. He does do Not that. a surprise by this point. No, um, no, no, it's fine. I just mean it's, it's a good it's know, visually. It's, right. <laughs> it's not. It's not some sort of like half-ass force power thing. It looks fucking really good. Yeah. No, the, this mo- this movie does not actually look cheap. Not at all. No. Like no. all the effects are great, except when they don't want them to be. Right, and that's yeah. what you want. So. Paige is struggling with Ned. I think they both knock each other out somehow. The main vampire is choking Jerry with the force and takes him yes. outside. And we didn't mention earlier, but one of the bits they set up with how the house is constructed is that one of the railings uh, is only attached by zip ties on the balcony. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, so uh, Charlie, God damn this it. is Charlie's moment, <laughs> right? The brother who struggles, who's kind of the wallflower guy. He Um, talks to a pencil. He talks to a pencil. Well, here it is. Mike, you said you were, you, this took you by surprise, right, Mike? Yeah. Yeah. What is beautiful about this is it is exactly mirroring the beginning of the film where the small child stabs the vampire. Charlie takes the pencil out of his ear, then whispers to it. I'm so sorry. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and then stabs the vampire through his his heart. He doesn't do it yet. He stabs it through the back, and we get a return of the... He, he stabs the vampire in the back, which drops Jerry yeah. on his knees. Right. Charlie pushes the vampire, who then falls over Jerry behind him in a callback to a gag earlier in, like, a flashback. In the diner. Well, the, in the diner, oh, Charlie in the diner. was yeah. tripped. Chad... Chad, the bully, pushed Charlie, uh, yeah. and there was somebody under behind Charlie's legs. So... That's also a callback, like you said, Chris, because yeah, yeah, um, he Charlie uses that gag to push the vampire over the balcony, yeah. and he gets impaled Absolutely. on the big statue, right? Yeah. Well, I was gonna no. Well. <laughs> <laughs> this is my also my this favorite is the fucking best part. part. <laughs> oh man, this is so great! They set up this whole Ned's wood with the big, outstretched, clearly obvious stake in his sculpture. He gets. Bumped off the balcony and he falls down and then he doesn't get the spear. <laughs> <laughs> it's the pencil. Just the the pencil. pencel goes into his heart. Yep. <laughs> and so I love crazy. it. And they all break there. They all think, okay, we're, these vampires pop. So they all just brace for it because this is yes. the big guy. And you yes. think, oh God, this is going to be a tidal wave of blood. And it's just this little, oh. <laughs> this little bitty spurt out of the hole. <laughs> <laughs> What's great about this? Well, you kill the head vampire. Is this what you're going to say, Jay? Yeah, I was getting there. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. You you kill the head vampire, and all the child vampires are cured. So Ned Ned comes running out. Right. I don't want to like blow past this bit because I love this. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Ned is it. they're surprised because Ned's fine, you, and and then Charlie lays out the mythology. Yeah, you kill the head vampire, and people who are they're still there come back. Yeah. So Ned's okay. And then when Charlie lays this out, this mythology, like, hey, if you're alive when the head vampire's dead, you become human again. And you can see it sink into them that they just (laughs) killed, like, everyone in town. (laughs) And if they hadn't, (laughs) all of these people would be alive. There's this great scene of them walking through the house from the security cameras, just looking around, and they're stepping over... (laughs) All of these dead people. Like, literally the entire town is in this this house. It (laughs) is wonderful. So good. And and there's several nice surprises here, which I'm fine. I mean, happy ending, give it to me. It's great. Because surprise, um, we have Walter back, right? Well, Wayne, no, Wayne, Wayne comes back. First one. Wayne comes back, and everyone's alive. Everyone's excited except Ned. Wayne's alive! Yay! Uh, but and, and Wayne's like thanking Ned, like, "Wait, to stab me in the shoulder. Good job, Ned. Good job." <laughs> he thinks it's on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a very good bet. Oh, uh, and then yes, then Walter comes back, and again, a, a very favorite line. He says. This isn't the first time I've been bathed in the blood of vampires. <laughs> like, yeah. God damn it. So they all go outside. Ned is is sort of blown away. Everyone's just getting their head wrapped around what happened. And Ned says, so there really are vampires. And Walter says, <laughs> Vampires? They're nothing compared to the goddamn werewolves. <laughs> <laughs> Boom, credits. I have money. Let me 
get a sequel. <sighs> if if we could get a sequel with werewolves, it would be glorious. Rating time. Well, it seems like we enjoyed the movie. Uh, I think so. Yeah. Let's find out on. Let's let's put a numeric value to that. We are going to rate this in um, what I feel is the gone with the wind of rating systems. Oh, um, <laughs> we are going to rate this in twirls. <laughs> yes, <laughs> one to one hundred twirls. Crazy Chris Hudson. All right. Oh man, I you know so much about this movie is this is two in a row that have been just great. This movie. Was so good. You just have to watch it. Our review is not going to do it justice. I think uh, you just have to turn it. It's on, it's on Amazon. You've got Amazon Prime. Just go watch it. Just just watch the goddamn thing because it's so much fun. I can't really think of any really big plot holes. Nothing that really. It's so the story is pretty tight for what it is, and um, it's just a fun movie. So uh, ninety one twirls. Very cool. Very nice. Mike? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Let me talk to you about how I feel about this movie. Man, this thing, Jay, fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's super fun. I mean, it's, I, I even, I would almost argue it's not even a B movie. It's just a nice indie f- flick, right? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's so competently done. And, like, the jokes, like, most of them hit. There's a couple that maybe don't or, or aren't as good, but you still appreciate it when it happens. Like, you're like, oh, I see what you're doing there. Like, and it's, so as long as you're not a dick, like, it's fine. And, man, I had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun watching this. The, the, the special effects they do in it, not a single special effect looks bad. Literally... When they do one, they do a handful of them, and not a single one looks bad. Mm-hmm. Like, they put the money where the money needed to be, and and they did the effort, and they did a very good job of it. And the, the script makes sense, and it's fucking fun as hell. Um, 96 twirls! Woo! Whoa! Jay, what do you think? Okay. <sighs> Guys, look. Okay. The characters are great. Um... Like I said, I feel like all the bits paid off. And for me, all the jokes landed. Like, I, I can't really think of anything that I rolled my eyes at. Um, you guys said the effects are solid. It's true. Um, we talked about how it's disguised. I mean, it, it disguises its budget. I, th- I don't know if I've ever thought about a rating more because I've watched this and thought about this a lot over the last couple days. But and I, so I say this. I'm not this is not just in the moment. Okay, this is not just in the moment. This is with thought out and reason. Give it to us, Jay. Give it. We're going to end on a high note here, guys. Give it, Jay. 100. Yes! I'm doing it. Woo! Oh, my God. Look, the last time I gave a 100, I said this podcast exists because of, for, for movies like this, to find movies like this. And I feel the same way about this movie as I did about that movie. Like... Hell yeah. Everything is so solid and fun. <laughs> and I feel very confident in that rating. I think it's was that fantastic. Chopping mall? No, it was Ernest. <laughs> Ernest? It was the gloom beam. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this movie is so much better than Ernest. Uh, yeah, it, oh, you know, man. but I like I feel confident in saying it. I think there it's a well reasoned argument of me giving it it's a one. It's fair. And it's fair. Yeah, yeah. So I totally yeah. Because totally. um this is for the listeners out there, we haven't talked about this too much. We have a little B movie mania hall of fame. And what happens it's true. when one of us gives a movie a one hundred, that movie goes into our B movie mania hall of fame. So I had a bloody good time at House Harker. We'll go into our illustrious and very well known and very talked about B Movie Mania Hall of Fame. Just go to Hall of Fame dot B Movie Mania dot com and you can see all the movies we've chosen. There's some great ones. I'm gonna say real quick, doing a quick calculation that I believe Manborg had an average score of ninety five between the three of us. So close. This one, ninety five point six. Ooh. Whoa! So uh, Whoa. we ended the season on the highest note ever. And I gotta say, for season four, there's nowhere to go but down. That's right. 
<laughs> We're screwed. Wait, what? No, the rumbling. What's that rumbling? What's what? guys? Oh. Do you hear that music? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. 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 I. What is that? You don't. You. You don't think it could be? Could it be the Prince of Magic? Prince, Prince of Magic. Magic. From 1983's The Killing of Satan? No. Wait, wait. Where where is he? What what's all this smoke? Ah, here I am, suckers. You look a little different. The Prince of Magic has many forms and voices. Oh, oh, oh man! man. Was that necessary? Indeed! You three have grown soft. What do you mean, Prince of Magic? Prince, Prince of Magic. I have been listening in my mountain fortress. This season was good. You have grown strong. But you just said we were soft. Silence! Ow! <laughs> you do not even know the difference between soft and strong. Yet. Yes? I am here to offer you the chance to join me atop the mystical mountain to hone your podcasting skills. Come with me and you will be unstoppable. What say you? So we'll be super hosts? Hmm, you got it. Let's go! Where is the boy with the jetted pack? Uh, Paul wasn't on the season very much. I just thought he was being quiet. Well, no matter. But Prince of Magic. Prince, Prince of Magic. How will we get to your mountain sanctuary? The answer is simple, dear boys. Magic. Prince. Prince. <laughs> <laughs> mm, but seriously, I didn't like Bikini Hotel much either. Julie Strain was nice, though. And that, dear listeners, is how the B-Movie Maniacs died. Just kidding. They'll be back in season four. Good heavens, they've been doing this podcast for that long? (laughs) Anyway, they will have some fun off-season content coming out very soon. They get extra weird, if you can believe it. If you like what you hear, please subscribe using your favorite podcasting service. Perhaps even leave a comment. That would really help the boys out. You can check out their t-shirts at bmoviemania.com if you're in need of some clothes. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, the magic has been inside you the entire time. Good night. I have to piss myself so bad.